Hey, what is up guys? Uh, Tejas here from 11 Gauge Recordings. So welcome to part two of uh, this video series where I'll be getting into some of the songs of my upcoming EP and showing you guys how I treat uh, each of the instruments in the songs. So in the previous part, I went through uh, the three things that bands should take care of before getting into a recording studio. So now I'll be, sh now I'll be showing you how I kind of treat each instrument in the song mix it and my process of uh, doing things. So I'll start out with uh, playing a bit of the song first and then solo the drums and then get into each part of the drums uh, separately and show you guys what I do to treat the drums. So let's just have a listen to how the song sounds. This is the last part of the song called Don't Get Too Comfy. Here goes. <laughs> So yeah, so let's just uh, solo the drums now and listen to the drums as such. So in a previous uh, video, I already mentioned the samples I used and that kind of stuff. So I'll just get into it um, in a brief way right here. So I started out with the drum fort sample got it to kind of where I wanted it to be and then processed it a bit. I then blended that with a few slate samples, got it closer to where I wanted it to be and then processed that a bit again. So let's just uh, solo the kick now. I'll start out with that's a drum fourth sample and then get into how I processed it. So here's how the sample sounded before any processing. So my first step, start out with a bit of a VCC, followed by a pre, and then a bit of EQ and a bit of compression. So I'll just bypass all of them and uh, bring it in one by one. Uh, listen carefully. Uh, hopefully, you're, uh, hopefully you guys are uh, wearing uh, headphones or listening on your uh, monitors. These changes are. Uh, a bit subtle. I mean, some of them are quite major, but uh, some of them are a bit subtle. So listen for it as and when I uh, bring it in. So here goes. So yeah, the VCC, obviously some console magic there uh, and the pre is driving it a bit. Let's see, I'll just bypass the EQ and the compression. I'll just uh, bring in the EQ first so you can see what exactly the EQ is doing. So yeah, I just applied a high pass at 36 a bump at around uh, 52, just cut out a bit of 238, increase a bit of 1.37 and a high shelf at around 7.5. And lastly, just a uh, compressor just to control the transients a bit. I'll show you what that does. Cool, so that's the first step. And then I bring in the slate samples. So I chose uh, two samples that I liked. Notice that the mix knob is 
just at uh, 32. 32 was quite a bit of difference. So, so I just wanted a bit of the characteristic of the original sample and then the characteristics of these two kicks from the slate. By the way, the counter kick is not a slate sample. It's a, a sample uh, made by Mr. Jordan Valeriot. Uh, he's uh, produced and mixed a lot of my favorite bands actually. So he gave out a few samples, so I just downloaded them and I like them. This is how it sounds. And this is how the black kick sounds. Bit of that, uh, bit of that uh, room tone. So again, the mix knob is at 32. I'll bypass this and bring it in. Quite a bit of difference for 32%. But then there is uh, the characteristic of the origin sample too. So the third step is, third step and the last step is a bit of EQ again. I've just, uh, again, a bump. There's a bump at uh, 54, a cut at around 200 and just, 0.63 dB increase at 1.29. That's it. Just a mild EQ move there. So um, let's just see what that does. Cool, so that's what I've done for the kick. Let's get into the snare now. So I follow the same uh, process for the snare. Started out with the drum foot sample and then got into the snare sample. So let's just bypass all the inserts. This is how the snare sounded uh, originally. First step, almost the same chain as the kick. I'll just uh, bring it in one by one. Here. Cool, so the EQ is doing uh, a bump at around 220 hertz, a cut at around 478 hertz, and a high shelf at around 7.5. Bit of compression at the end. That's it for the first step on the snare. Then bring in the slate samples. Again, the mix is at 32. So these are the samples that I've uh, blended in, the black snare. The slate snare. Snare 13, snare 11, and a brass snare just for that ring. Cool, so let's uh, bring that in. Cool. So after that, again in uh, EQ, so I've just done a bump at around 5k and a shelf again at 7.5 and the high pass is at 74, Let's see what that does. Here's what I did next. 
ah one of my favorite uh, plugins here the vtm so let's just uh, bypass that and bring that in you can see what that does This is one of those uh, subtle plugins where it just makes a really small difference, but it it adds a bit of uh, that pop to the snare. Also, the red lights is on purpose. It just uh, needed a bit of saturation from the tape. And lastly, a bit of reverb. You need a reverb on your snare just to get that uh, roomy feel so uh, i just put a hall reverb at 25 percent let's just bypass that by the way this is on solo it sounds like a night and day difference but in the context of the whole mix it's a very subtle difference so i'll show you guys how it's on solo and then i'll uh, bring it in um, on the whole mix and you can see how subtle it is actually in the context of the entire mix so here it is on uh, solo quite a huge difference right so now in the context of the entire mix quite subtle right let's get into the overheads so the overheads obviously have to be treated a little bit uh, differently so let's just solo that started out with with a bit, uh, with a bit of uh, VCC EQ and a bit of uh, compression using the LAN76 so let's just see how the overhead sounded uh, before Oop, okay, let's just get into a place where there are overheads. Okay, cool. Cool. This is what the VCC does. very subtle the EQ it's mainly taking out uh, some of those lows don't really need that and uh, a shelf at uh, 7.5 I don't know why I like 7.5 that much it's just a default setting and I just like increase it to where I want it to be so a small dip at uh, 6k with a very narrow queue so let me just show you what this is doing so let me just increase uh, the 6k and you'll hear what I was trying to do so here Yeah, that's kind of an uh, annoying frequency there. So just trying to get that out. Again, a dip at uh, 1.68. And uh, the, the high pass at uh, 364 hertz, which is removing quite a bit of those uh, lows. And now lastly, the 1176 compression. Let's see what that does. So it's catching some of those uh, snare transients which I don't really need from the overheads because I need most of the punch to come through from the actual uh, snare sample. So that's the first uh, step. Yeah, I do this often for uh, overheads because overheads usually do have quite a bit of annoying frequency. So, so I'll just play the overheads with the EQ and then 
remove it. So you can kind of notice what exactly is taking out. So you hear those annoying frequencies? Yep. That's what I was trying to take out. So it's then followed by a de -esser. So let me show you what that does. This makes quite a bit of difference. So let's just uh, start with that switched off and then I'll dig it in. Again, it helps kind of uh, smoothen the overheads a bit. And finally, a bit of uh, limiting. So this is mainly to catch some of those uh, erratic snare heads and some of those erratic symbols. So let's see what this does. It's, I don't think it's doing a lot. Let's just see what this, does. let's just see what this is doing. Now, as these are programmed drums, you don't really need to go crazy on uh, uh, the limiting side of things because these are samples. So there is no way it, it will be as erratic as live drums. So if it was a live drum situation, I would have kind of gone a bit more uh, crazy on the limiting so that it catches each snare. So, because in a live drum situation, you know, a drummer is not a robot. So there might be some loud snare hits, there might be some quiet snare hits. So to catch some of those uh, snares that go out of control, you need to kind of uh, limit it a bit more. So that's the O heads. Let's get into the room now. So this is how the room sounds. <laughs> So first step is to give it a little bit of that far off feel. So let's just bypass that and begin. So it sounds like it's been played in a huge room. So that was the intention. It's then followed by an SSL style bus compressor just to kind of uh, give it that feel like the drum was going crazy on the drum. So, so let's just uh, bring it. So it sounds like the snare is being hit harder than it actually is being hit. So. Bit of an EQ move. So mainly removing some of those um, lows and those highs. Don't really want the symbols from the room so much because I'm using uh, the overheads to get uh, most of the simple definition. So. Followed again by a de -esser. Again, kind of uh, smoothens it out a bit. And again, uh, lastly, there's a limiter. Cool. So that's uh, that's about it for um, each of the drums. We can now get into uh, the drum bus 
and the drum parallel compression. So, so on the drum bus, I start out with an, NS, uh, an SSL bus. Let's just see what that. Is. Sorry about that. That is followed by a bit of an EQ uh, to remove out some of that low mid uh, kind of rumble. So I'll show you what I was trying to remove. Yeah, I didn't really want much of that. And uh, followed by my one of my favorite plugins, the JST clip. Now this is the normal uh, drum bus. Now the drum parallel compression bus is this track right here, which has uh, two inserts. One is a compressor and one is the JST clip. So what I do is I kind of mix this in along with the drum bus. So let's just mute this parallel compression bus and see what exactly this track is bringing in. So it's bringing in a lot of that uh, punch of the kick and snare. So this is uh, the 1176 kind of a compressor with the all buttons in mode, slow attack, fast release, and the JST clip. That's about it for uh, drums here. So in the next part, we'll get into a bit of the bass and I'll show you what I've done for uh, my base tone. See you guys in the next video.